subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirma Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here on the idea. We have with us Gulam Zia, ED at Night Frank India, joining in. Welcome to the show, Gulam. A pleasure to have you on the show and to speak to you as well after a really long time. I hope everyone at home, yourself and colleagues are all safe at this juncture. Thank you so much. All well. Thanks a lot. God's grace. Everything is fine. Thank you so much. Let's roll. Absolutely. Gulam, you know, overall, you know, as we've been talking, there was already a slowdown in terms of growth in the economy. And with that, COVID hit us. Now, real estate as a sector, which is really labor intensive, not only in its own form, but even from the supply side, that was one of the sectors which was which really hard. Taking from March when the lockdown started to now, how would you actually describe this timeline? Well, um, uh, as rightly put up, uh, the economy and specifically real estate has been going through a tough time for a much longer period. So while you're talking about two or three years of economy looking not so good, real estate is talking about at least, at least half a decade for sure, where the chips were down, where the things were, you know, gradually falling apart for the sector. So, uh, you know, first real estate, then economy, and then the, the pandemic. So uh, pandemic was that proverbial last nail in the coffin for real estate. So uh, it couldn't have been worse than whatever we've gone through. So what we were experiencing, obviously, was the worst patch that anybody could have ever thought about um, uh, going through as far as this sector is concerned. I'm sure we have seen lots of uh, cyclical ups and downs, um, whether it was the, the, the post-global financial crisis situation or prior to that, one or two of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, downturns that we had seen, at least I am talking about three decades that I have been a part of this industry, we've seen enough of downturns, but this was the worst of its kind. And as we spoke about with uh, the onset of COVID, the, the first quarter of this financial year, starting March, we saw something which was unbelievable. Obviously, it is something which uh, uh, the humankind haven't, hasn't really experienced in last a century, if not more. Okay. Which has brought the whole real estate industry to a grinding halt, a completely grinding halt. I, I remember we, when we released a certain research report and uh, we spoke about uh, a zero transaction in a certain market, people were taken aback. How can you say zero transaction? Well, that's a reality. When people could not go out and register their uh, uh, transactions, obviously it shows zero transaction, right? So that's exactly what it was. A certain quarter had gone completely dry, bone dry, if I have to say so. So that was the situation. Now, your question is, in that downturn, which were the sectors which really saw the worst of it? Mm. Well, um, uh, residential, in any case, was going through a serious turmoil. And mm. it's not that uh, almost 80% of real estate as a sector is residential. And hence, then if I have to, and from your perspective, I would rather also talk about the key stakeholders because you know these are the corporates which you would worry about. So the developers who were essentially and largely into residential had seen the worst of their times in the last almost half a decade. On the other side, commercial sector was doing fairly well. In fact, uh, the previous financial year, previous calendar year, we saw the best performance as far as commercial or office sector is concerned, with upwards of 60 million square feet of office space transacted in that one year, which was a record path-breaking kind of a performance which we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, so when, if I have to once again relate with the downturns, if I talk about the, the downturn, the last downturn we saw post GFC, that was a time when we were almost touching about the 40 odd million square feet of a transaction in a year, and then immediately thereafter, after GFC, what we saw was it shrinking to uh, less than 20 million square feet in a year, which were half of it shaved off. Now, 
if we look at that and come back to this sector, then this period we are in right now, um, uh, you know, we were at 60 million as far as office space is concerned, transactions and, and, and uh, usage of office space, operationalization of office space, 60 million last calendar year. Calendar year. And this year, we had to really observe how it is going on. So the first two quarters were seriously bad. Mm. The sector also, which was actually performing so well. And then quickly before we move on to what's happening today, if I have to look at one or two other sectors, like retail, for example, retail or even hospitality, you know, you couldn't have asked for worse than that. These two sectors were completely gone, if I have to really put it that way. First two quarters post GFC, which is the financial year quarter one, quarter two, March and uh, uh, September quarter, were actually very bad. Sorry, March and June quarter, July quarter, were pathetic. Because it's, it's evident, all retail, you know, malls, etc. were shut down. Hospitality, all hotels were shut down. So this was a period where performance was horrendous. And then obviously, which, which, which actually resulted in many of the users, the, the retailers on one side, as far as malls are concerned, and on the other side, even for hotels, uh, forget about the owners, the, the, those who were operating it were also in dire straits, no revenues and only costs. I have come across one or two hotels in Goa where just because one or two of the rooms were occupied, they had to run the whole operation for the whole of that period when everything was shut down. So you can imagine what kind of losses were they going through. Well, and it's not just India. It's all over the world, obviously. The world, yeah. so first, hit, first hit was retail and hospitality. But on the other side, there's something else which was happening uh, uh, perniciously below the radar. There were two sectors which were performing fairly decently before the onset of COVID. One was warehousing and logistics. Mm. That's the thing which is at last accepted as a part of real estate because it obviously consumes huge amount of real estate. Yeah. So warehousing and logistics was one sector which was in any case doing fairly well. Not maybe as good as office sector, but doing fairly well. Mm. And the sector which got a boost during the times of COVID because because of e-commerce, because of online ordering. So, so, so the big need of center city warehousing to, to cater to the demand of the consumption, whatever consumption was going on, you know, because we're all behind our closed doors, we're sitting at home and ordering the essentials or beyond essentials to the e-commerce only. And that was a time many of them actually went out and put up their center city uh, uh, set, uh, um, uh, delivery systems which involved taking more real estate. So that was one sector which actually did better in the times of COVID. On the other side, the other sector, which was, as I said, perniciously, perniciously doing well was data centers. And that's something which is happening at a larger perspective because of our uh, data insecurities, because of the, the countrywide drive to you know, keep our data within the country. That's something which also gave a huge boost to that sector, obviously COVID notwithstanding. But data centers have already also done very well. So that's roughly the, a quick look at uh, the, the sectors during or pre-COVID. Now talk about today, what's going on. If I have to look at uh, uh, the latest data, well, uh, of course, in the interim, what has really happened is, you know, with uh, most of the key stakeholders uh, uh, gasping for breath, trying to remain alive, uh, those are the days when you used to use the, the term that keeping the nose above water. Well, that's not the case. It was here. It was just trying to breathe, trying to be alive, mm. whatever it is. So that is where many of the stakeholders reached out to uh, uh, the, the policymakers and etc. Tried trying to see some lease of life to be given to this sector. Mm. And of course, the government did. Uh, a lot of these things were happening even pre-COVID and during the COVID also uh, they made a couple of those announcements, etc. And, and offered help to the sector. And that is what, if I have to just take one of those examples, um, uh, in at least in the state of Maharashtra, they, they reduced the stamp duty from 5% to 3%. That is 60% reduction in stamp duty. Yeah. Yeah. And the developers lobby did its part. They also declared that the rest of the 2% they will absorb in their offers. So what came out is that it, the, the stamp duties were completely waived off. Mm -hmm. And that happened 
somewhere at the end of September. But then in October and November, we are in December right now, October and November, we saw fantastic sales. Those are the periods where, and, and, and let's not forget, at the end of September and, and early October, we also had Twitter Punch, a period in which transactions are supposed to be inauspicious. People don't normally buy, mm. forget about they don't buy the normal, uh, 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 you know, the smaller products either. The consumption goes for a complete halt in that period. But to our surprise, if it, and actually to our shock, we saw a huge uprise, in, uh, uh, upscale transactions happening in Maharashtra, in Maharashtra, Mumbai, and Pune specifically. Mm. And that continued. That continued in Dasera, that continued in Diwali. So the few numbers, if I have to talk about, uh, in the month of uh, October, that's Dasera, coinciding Dasera, Mumbai saw five and a half, five, five and a half thousand apartments sold in one month. Wow. And if that was not a shocking enough of a number, let me talk about November, where we saw 9,000 plus apartments sold in one month in Mumbai alone. So what are we talking about? It's, it's a kind of a resurgence, which is unheard of. And let me tell you, while the state government of uh, Maharashtra did its part to bring in some respite to the already moribund kind of a sector. On the other side, while other state governments didn't match up, and then let's not forget that even the central government did its bit uh, uh, to bring in some respite to the income tax clarity. You know, we had that huge concern that if you're buying, and then which is what had happened. In the recent couple of years, almost about half a decade, Pretty much every region, the prices dropped. Mm. But the governments were not swift enough, were not quick enough to bring in those changes in the ready reckoner values or the circle rates, whatever is the term locally used in different markets. So there was a huge gap, at least about on an average, 15% of reduction that we have seen and noted in the last three to four years in practically every market. In few markets, it could be even wider. Mm. So the up between the circle rates and the, the transaction value was huge and which used to give jitters to the buyers and developers both you know because if you do a transaction with that much of a gap with the the the, the ready retina values the income tax guys would invariably chase you for their pound of flesh and that is where the central government did bring in a big respite where they said that they expanded the the gap limit to 20 uh, percent and that was a huge respite. People did come in hordes to buy apartments. And when I say come in hordes, well, it is evident. If I'm talking about 9,000 apartments sold in a month in Mumbai, that's a record of sorts. You know, if I have to look at last 10 years of festive seasons, uh, apartments sold in the month of November, last 10 years hasn't gone beyond 9,000 apartments. And we did that. So the point is that there are buyers. And then that's something which I would want to convey loud and clear that there is consumption, pent up consumption requirement, pent up demand there out there. And we just need to ex explore and find out the right consumer. Well, I'm not completely saying that we are out of the woods yet, you mm -hmm. know, because too, too little a data point for me to conclude and say that everything is now fine and we are back in business. It's too soon to say that. Because when I'm talking about those huge numbers, let's not also discount that it has happened after almost six months of complete inactivity. So it's likely that there was a pent up demand. There were people who would have transacted but not registered their documents. They would have registered this, this is the moment they realized that five more percent of respite is coming their way mm -hmm. by duty waiver. So they would have come out in hold. So I'm not saying that this 9,000 is the new benchmark. 9,000 apartments or 10,000 apartments sold in a month to be sold in a month is a new benchmark? Definitely not. We'll need some more data points to convincingly say that. And that's a bit too soon. So only point I'm trying to drive across is that there is consumption in the market. If we have the right product, the right, uh, right policies and right uh, 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 locations, buyers are there. So that's residential sector. I, I think you wanted to say something. I'm, I'm not giving you. No. The, what I wanted to pick out over here is that, you know, as you mentioned, Mumbai has led the pack. Pune has done well as well. Gulam, uh, registrations have improved, agreed. New record highs that we've seen in the month of November. But do you think this could be a case of over-optimism as well? And concerns could surface, uh, you know, and the revival could probably taper off from here on. 
which is possible. Uh, uh, if you mark my words, that I'm, I'm obviously not saying that we we are true. We, we are out of uh, wolves and that, that everything is going to be uh, uh, very well going forward. I didn't say that. And that's, that's the point. You very, very uh, appropriately picked up, Hiral. What I've been talking about is not to be taken as the signs of good times. Not yet. At least not yet. So one more thing I would, before I conclude that point is, it's not just Mumbai. As we are observing, other markets like uh, 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 Bangalore and uh, uh, NCR and even Hyderabad have been doing pretty well on residential sector. So it's not just only because of the stamp duty waiver, it's even otherwise a lot of things. Like for example, let's also not forget the, 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 the mortgage rates. It's all time low, almost about touching 7% kind of uh, mortgage rates, which is otherwise historically not seen. So a lot of these things have ha happened for the overall countrywide real estate requirement, which is positive. So um, my, my little point was that the policymakers and the governments have frankly done almost everything that could have happened for the sector positively. Now it's the time for the consumers mm -hmm. to take seriously and come out and buy. And, and that's the point I'm also trying to put across. And, and maybe this stamp duty waiver is nothing but nothing else but an improvement in your sentiments. And let's also face it that real estate involves huge amount of sentiments also. You know, because we're talking, we're actually taking a future back on our cash flows. When you're taking a home loan, we are expecting that your career will continue to rise in next 10, 15 years and your, your ability to serve those EMIs will continue to go up. Many of us actually, while well, today we could afford, say, one bedroom mall kitchen apartment, we end up stretching it to 2 BHK, only thinking that in future I will have my raises and I'll, I'll go up the corporate ladder, etc. And we'll have more money at my disposal to pay my EMIs. Mm -hmm. So those are definitely sentiments, right? So And those sentiments are needed to be built. Mm -hmm. Talking about that stamp duty waiver, more than anything else, it's, like, it's that sentiment booster, which is a great idea for those who are sitting on the fence to actually jump on the other side and sign the dotted line. So that's what I'm referring to. That this, It's obviously too soon to say that we are absolutely back in business, but it's an indicator that we are not as bad as we were even pre-COVID. And let me also highlight, it's not just a residential sector. Let's quickly have a look at the other sectors, offices. In offices, while we are still collating our data, we, we complete, we do our uh, year-end report. Maybe another fortnight will be out with the data, but initial indications are looking very positive. So a sector, and especially when everybody and their families and uncles are talking about work from home, and many of us are also working from home genuinely as Hiral, you yourself are working from home, but then let's also look at what's happening out there on the ground. People are also realizing that these disruptions may be momentary. You know, we are today talking about the COVID and its implications, but at the same time, with the vaccine becoming an absolute reality, it's only a matter of time, maybe a quarter or so from today, while globally there are a few countries who are on the verge of completing their population vaccinated, in India, obviously, it's going to be a Herculean task with the kind of population that we are talking about. It's going to be a huge task yeah. to get them all vaccinated. It may take a couple of quarters, but then whatever said and done, at least we know that it's going to be ending. Maybe in a quarter or two or three. So then for something that you have a, a worry of a two or three quarters, would you make your complete strategic shift from working from in, in an office to going working from home? it's going to be very difficult to digest. And then that's what is happening on ground. The reality is in front of us, things are changing fast for commercial spaces and the transactions wait for another fortnight for me to give you with conviction. The numbers that we're going to see in this quarter could be more than what we would have seen the same quarter of last year, 2019. So the net, net point I'm seeing is that there is a clear sign of, you know, of good things in front of us. Now, how soon it will happen? Time to it will, it will be decided in whether it's going to be two months or three or six. But definitely, I want to believe with, with, and it's not just my faith and belief, it's also based on the statistics and the numbers that we're looking at, that the worst is behind us, for sure. Right. So, but Gulam, let me play the devil's advocate, especially with regards to where the office space goes. Now, you know, many companies were re-examining their requirements on the back of the impact of the pandemic. 
and if you talk about the office vertical as well it's almost near its cyclical high because it's been almost say 8 years from the trough of calendar year 12 and historical data if you go to see it does indicate that there is a possibility that the cycle is due for a trend reversal do you see a possibility of these sorts especially on the office side well uh, it's not wrong to be a devil's advocate. Obviously, while we are planning and strategizing for future, we have to uh, keep some, you know, uh, margins for something going wrong that we are highlighting. But let's, let's definitely not forget the macro picture. An economy which was going from uh, 1 trillion to 2 to 3 and then promising to reach the 5 trillion mark in near foreseeable future and then marching towards 10 trillion Hmm. These are things which we which will give us confidence and let's not also not forget that when we're talking about expansion of economy, the sector which will get the definite and for sure benefit will be commercial. You know, because when you're putting up industries, when you're putting up infrastructure, when you're putting up a lot of these things, which are the key pillars of the economic growth, when you're doing all that, you obviously require people to work. And while the execution people will be working at various sites, who you need marketing people, sales people, the accounting people, the whole back end of your or of your CRMs, etc., to also be falling in place. And all that growth is something which will require office. I understand a few of that, and then it's not that uh, the work from home is going to be completely over. Some fraction of your workers will continue to work from home. But then let's not forget that the upside is still to be explored. Mm. I understand your your concern or your uh, uh, your 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 uh, you trying to play the, the the devil's advocate's role. It's it's all of us. Somebody in every organization should raise that flag and 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 uh, uh, tell people to be cautious. So mm. here you are cautious, but at the same time you can't be pessimist. You know because on one side the economy has to grow. It's already on a path from where it is actually from three to five trillion is happening. In any case, it's happening. But even if you do whatever you wish to, it will grow to that level. Mm. Right? And that is happening. Obviously, you will need office spaces to be to cater to the, the workers' requirement. And that is something which you can't challenge. I agree. Cautious, optimism, etc. Those are the terms which are floating around for some time. It, it should be there. But then at least I don't want to believe that we'll go back to those 10, 20 million office space absorption in a year days. Those are behind us. So right. it may be 50, may, may stabilize at 60 million per year. But that itself, in itself, is a huge boost. And let's also look at one thing that uh, in last couple of years or half a decade, a lot of things have changed. When you're talking about a cyclical movement and expecting or anticipating something wrong to happen, well, let's also look at a lot of other things that have happened compared to the last downside, uh, downside of the cycle. The economy, first of all, has grown from 1 trillion to 3 trillion. That itself is giving you confidence that this is a this is something which is a fact. You can't deny that. And that much of a growth. And beyond that, all your infrastructure, etc., whether you talk about multiple international airports or, or multiple private airports that have come up to the port, to the roads, and you name it, it's just growing by the day. So these are things which are putting a very, it's something which is it's like a sun, it's on your face. You can't say that it's not shining. It's right there. Even then, if you have to uh, keep certain margin for things to go wrong, like for example, the pandemic itself, mm. who could have uh, predicted, who could have spoken about an on, uh, on setting of a pandemic? Nobody. But while what you're talking about is for someone to keep that possibility in mind is good. If you have that possibility considered, you may be prepared to face another. So prepare for it, but don't don't doubt the the, the what is what is evident. Don't doubt what is definitely to come. Hmm. Right. So so Kulam, with this, to my understanding, now there is an improvement in demand that has come in, and a couple of factors that have been increasing. The demand is the increasing affordability for the common man because interest rates are low. There has been a reduction of stamp duties and a decline in property prices as well. So clearly it's the discounts as well as the incentives that have aided this kind of demand growth. If you could just help me understand what has been the kind of 
price trend reduction that we've seen because a report that I was reading as well that uh, Nirmal Bang themselves have released uh, was indicating that the prices have declined by say 10 to 30 percent in absolute terms and around 30 to 50 percent in real terms uh, and is this a fact that you are seeing in terms of price reductions and are you expecting any further price reductions from here on? Well what you said is perfectly fine. What you spoke about uh, uh, a 15 or 15 or 20 percent of uh, real price correction is true. Hmm. It is um, uh, sorry, actual uh, um, uh, price correction. Now, the point is, uh, do we expect the prices to continue to fall is something which has to be debated. Well, look at it this way. Um, uh, you know, when the prices have been coming down, one thing that has happened is a huge amount of, uh, 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 should I say, inventories which were pushed into a, a kind of... Uh, bankruptcy on the verge of or already you know uh, developers are unable to complete that mm -hmm. so on that front government has put up yet another uh, initiative by way of uh, the, the, the distress asset fund called Swami and that is something which has opened up or paved the way for a lot of other private players also so uh, people like SDFC and the others are also coming out soon with their own stressed asset funds so these are things which have happened, which is all, you know, these are, why am I referring to these things? These are things which are going to be stalling the free fall. Mm. And that happened. So the free fall that we're talking about, at least the indicators are, or the data and the statistics clearly says that the free fall is over. And why do I say that? Is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the price correction that we saw, whatever that 15, 20% uh, uh, real price or whatever that we're referring to, has happened over a period of time in different markets at different times. Yeah. There it is. It's, it's two things. One is that uh, a lot of these uh, initiatives that the government has taken to revive the industry have now at last showing results. You know, if I'm talking about it, and, and, and mind you, you may still want to discount because my data points of showing results is only last two, three months. Right. So after three months, you may uh, uh, challenge that what you said was wrong and I would have to, uh, with folded head, accept that things could have gone wrong unless we see a, a continuation of uh, the energies and the transactions that we see, things can go bad still. And let's also not forget that a lot of uh, projects and developers are still below the red line. And that is something that is a cause of concern. Mm. To see some more distress bringing project prices down, that could happen in isolation. That won't be a market reality across all kinds of products, across all locations, across all cities. You know, because while we are talking about price correction, I can tell you Hyderabad was one city which defied all price, correction, price corrections. That's one city where prices have actually been rising. Even in last two years or two and a half years, the prices in that market have been shooting up. So here it is. Every market has its own, uh, you know, uh, 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 realities, and a few markets have been extremely poorly performing, and that those are the markets where you may still see some more of uh, price correction happening. But it's not as if it's going to be free flow kind of or a free fall kind of a price that we've seen in last two three years. That at least the data says has been arrested. So what we see today will be a saturation. And from here on, we shall see either stabilization of prices or the prices moving up. Mm. And, and then that's what we're talking about as far as residential real estate is concerned. Commercial may still, you know, because commercial is, uh, uh, sentiments don't play a role in commercial. It's pure business. And that is a sector which may not follow the suit the way real residential real estate shall follow. And the reason for that is simple, you know, because uh, on one side, developers have taken a huge uh, uh, correction on their expectations, etc., because of uh, the fear of uh, uh, um, uh, people leaving their office, etc., which has happened in past. And then, uh, 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 with uh, even businesses, those who are the occupiers who are also facing the brunt because of the economic meltdown, uh, the scars are not going to be washed away so soon. So, as, as far as business is concerned, the organizations, the corporates, etc., shall definitely take it easy. They may not let the prices go up. And the developers, the way they are, 
may also be compelled to force to continue to bring prices down for some time so the point that you are trying to highlight in residential the way we that the things are poised residential prices the way we look at it the price fall has been arrested but as far as commercial is concerned we may see some more of a pressure on the prices on the rentals in times to come right so kulam with this you know uh, do you think there is a possibility where developers are mainly going to push uh to sell out the ready to move inventory because what's happening right now is the lack of funding to a lot of developers has increased the cash flow stress for them so then what happens is to start newer projects that's something which is going to start reducing for some time do you see that as a trend yeah that's happening as we speak new launches have been affected there were two reasons for that one Uh, uh during this last two or three quarters the labor availability of labor was the biggest challenge most of them migrated back to their uh, uh, native places etc and two is capital what you spoke about or what you're trying to highlight is only capital as a concern out of the rest i i would say both are a big concern capital as well as people mm. the workmen and and on both we are going to be we 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 shall see this gradually coming back in place like at least as far as laborers are concerned you been watching these laborers coming back to the sites and uh, and and the works at least in a few of those projects getting back to the original pace as it was going pre covid but that's that's a fraction of your overall industry majority of the players are still uh, uh, facing the heat for uh, not getting the laborers as well as capital capital again uh, at least the ones who are say corporate developers or the ones who have been doing fairly well well managed uh, developer or funds etc have access to capital even today as we speak and they are the ones who have pushed uh, um, uh, restarting of their projects to start with or they were the ones who actually initiated the 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 restarting of their works but on the other the other side large chunk of uh, industry a huge section of the industry still does not have access to both laborer as well as capital and that shall have an impact and as we see it is already happening a deep impact on the new launches mm. if we take that into account well it's a sign of a big concern because whenever the launches are shrinking it only says in future sometimes maybe a year and a half or two or three later you shall see an upward pressure on the prices where the demand shall continue to grow but the supply shall lose behind shall 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 remain behind that that gap economically will force you to relook at your prices and that is possible so our big concern is today if we are not able to get our supplies back in place as you are highlighting the 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 new launches or completion of the stuck projects it's not happening if it is not happening the way it should then maybe 2 years from today we shall sit and and worry about the prices going up right and and with this do you think especially on the commercial segment there is a possibility that we could be in short supply in the next few months because uh, developers are neither taking projects right now nor completing their existing projects because of the experience of lack of demand right now and no one's un- i mean everyone's unsure as to how the work from home scenario will pan out well uh, uh, the lack of uh, supply may not hurt you so soon you know because first of all we want the demand also to get back to where it was uh, and then comes the question of supply well as i said the uh, commercial sector the developers in the commercial sectors were the first ones to start the work again because this is one sector where the con- where the confidence levels were were very high and let's also uh, uh, acknowledge that the players have increased in as far as commercial real estate is concerned with a lot of these funds bringing in their reits and the real estate investment trusts that have come in have given yet another dimension to the especially the office industry while it has come for uh, uh, infrastructure segment as well in wits but at least for uh, the office sector the commercial real estate it has been a huge boost and that is something which is i spoke about uh, 
two concerns one was labor and the other was capital as far as capital is concerned the capital in any case was chasing commercial real estate a lot in last two years or so and that shall continue really because uh, the second read was launched during the covid period and it is doing exceptionally well so this is the second read at least two three more reads are waiting in the wings so the 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 point that we we need to also uh, uh, acknowledge and reckon with is that the commercial sector the confidence the conviction the faith in commercial sector is solid is rock solid so it's only a question of when the work from home effects will be waning away will be fading out at the same time the 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 supply side the whether it is the funds the banks or uh, the developers and the contractors are back in action works have started happening so i would want to believe and the data is very very clearly uh, uh, putting it up in place that in next couple of quarters we shall see decent amount of construction happening which in all likelihood may be going neck to neck with the way demand is increasing so at least the way commercial real estate is concerned we are not uh, ringing the alarm bells it is too soon to say that it's a, it's a sector which was doing going rock solid for us to raise concerns or cast aspirations on this sector will not be doing justice to that sector right and for our very last thing if you could take the residential side of it uh, do you think it's lease rental that is expected to pick up as well number 1 and number 2 what ticket size uh in in terms of the real estate housing sector is picking up uh first question is about uh, increase in uh, house rents yeah. now house rent increase is a lot to do with uh, affordability and uh, while of course affordability concern also uh, uh, comes up when you're talking about uh, buying it outright purchases etc for the houses mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but on the other side renting as such well a few things have gone against renting during the covid period which was the freedom of a, 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 a the person who's renting the apartment we mm-hmm. we realized that uh, we could have taken our own homes because uh, many of the societies were not very kind to the tenants while we were going through the pandemics etc so a lot of concerns were raised and, and those who were forced to uh, migrate back to their base station coming back and getting the apartments all over again is going to be a big task and that has maintained the pressure on the the rental values for as far as housing mm-hmm. concern so it is not that a huge uprise or or upswing for the residential rental that has not happened and let's not also forget that sudden increase in buying outright will have a pressure a downward pressure on the rental value you know we always simple econ- economics when when you're not buying it you are renting it but suddenly when you start buying it there shall be a pressure downward pressure on the rentals of real estate residential real estate we're talking about and that is bound to happen in times to come and and, and let's also uh, uh, not magnify it because on the other side the growing economy may create the demand for rental housing also you know when uh, you shall have new jobs created new jobs a lot of it a, a sizable significant portion of the new job may push for rental housing as well so that is bound to happen so it is still a, a, a 50 50 possibility the rent may the rents may not shoot up is a reality and the demand for it well time will tell how fast are we getting the economy back in place will decide whether the demand for residential will shoot up which shall have a, a upward impact on the prices time will tell but at least for next year year and a half we don't see much of an impact on the house rents shall remain flat the other question you i'm sorry i i on which ticket size is picking up right now well ticket size wise uh, uh, once again it's overall too soon to uh, say with conviction what's happening mm-hmm. but mid to high end has shown significant traction these are the these are the these are the uh, segments of market which were suffering the most especially the high end of the market the luxury apartments etc was suffering in the most at least in mumbai for sure uh, uh, last two months we've seen sizable chunk of uh, luxury housing and high end housing also finding buyers 
that is something which was as good as tall for last year and a half or two. Mm. So that, if at all it's uh, uh, to be seen as an indicator of times to come, well, things have started. At last, some traction is happening in luxury houses as well. Mm. Mid-size houses were always selling. In the interim, when the luxury was taking a huge beating, affordable housing was doing very well. And that was also on the back of a lot of those initiatives from the government and the Pradhan Mantri Havas Yojana, where there a lot of uh, benefits given for the bottom end of the housing, low end of the housing. So whether it was uh, credit link, uh, um, um, uh, home loan mortgages that they were seeking, or construction of their own houses, special uh, uh, interest rates available to them under the PMA. A lot of those benefits were coming along even for developers who are putting up affordable housing and so on. So pretty much it was a huge uh, uh, all-round uh, package which was offered for affordable housing. And that did show results for at least two years to start with. I would say in 2018 and 19, we saw huge results or huge upswing in uh, affordable housing taking up. Mm. But last year, and I'm, I'm not, not talking only during COVID, even pre-COVID, it had started showing signs of fatigue. So the, the affordable housing was not performing as it was in maybe a year and a half or two back. So I would say just to complete the, the submission, affordable housing, you have to still wait and uh, uh, expect better from affordable housing port, uh, sector of real estate. Mid-end, in any case, was doing fine. High end has started doing better. Right. And hopefully this recovery continues from here on as well. Thank you, Kulam, so much for joining us on the show. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Great insights and great trends that we've picked up from you. Thank you so much. Stay safe. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well and hoping to speak to you soon again. Thank you so much. <laughs> It was a pleasure here. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.